Well, I'm going to share with you today something that I have never shared publicly before. And so I am very serious about this. This is a, a very, very serious, 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 I, I can't overstate the word. I received this prophetic dream about three years ago, and I was not released to share it with you until now. As a matter of fact, the first time I ever shared the dream uh, was in this book right here, Decoding the Mysteries of Heaven's War Room. And I'm not talking about the epic vision of God's war room. I, 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 I've had a lot of dreams and visions over the years, and um, I record them. I am faithful to record them. This is shocking. This one I'm going to share with you. Uh, I mean, the, the vision of the epic war room in heaven was awesome. But this vision is shocking. And quite frankly, I didn't understand all of what it meant until about a year ago. That's why I didn't release it. I feel that we are uh, maybe too quick to release revelation before it's fully cooked. And so we've got a lot of half baked revelation. Now, sometimes it's wise to, you know, share what we know so that others can help to fill in the gaps. But this particular dream was so shocking. This particular dream was so shocking that I, I, I could not do it. I just didn't feel released to do it. And I, I didn't even get the fullness of the revelation until just recently. I mean, you know, with it, but about a year ago and the full, it, it's fully uh, outlined in this book, decoding the mysteries of heaven's war room. And then I actually be, listen, because of this vision, which this dream rather that I'm going to share with you because of this dream, I wrote a whole nother book just based on the dream. So I first shared it here, which this book just came out a few weeks ago, and it has to do with the, the mysteries of heaven's war room. And then as a follow-up, because this book's really not about that, right? This, this is one aspect of that, because in the vision uh, of, of heaven's war room, I saw angels that were dispatched to deal with Jezebel. That's why I put this, uh, this dream in this book, right? That's why I put the dream in the book. Uh, but I wrote a whole additional book. Uh, called Jezebel's Revenge, annihilating the spirit of Adaliah, because when I when I when I discerned really and I got the full revelation of this when I was writing this, go figure. I didn't have this when I wrote this. I had the the dream, but I didn't have the revelation, or I had the dream rather, but not the revelation, right? And so I didn't have the fullness of the revelation until I wrote this book. And then we had to publish it. We had to, we had to, we had to publish it. I, I, I couldn't, I couldn't write any more because the book's not about this. So this is a new book that just came out. I, I'd suggest you get both of them together, but I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the, the dream. I'm going to share it with you and I'm going to share with the interpretation, you know, because it's not about you buying a book. Yeah. I want you to buy the books, but I'm going to share it with you because that's how important it is. I'm not holding it hostage. I know a lot of people, they have dreams and visions. And if you, if you buy these, thir this 13, part course, um, you know, I'll share it with you about what each angel said or whatever it was. I, I've seen a lot of goofy stuff over the years. Um, but this right here, this is a mess, not the book, but the, but the, but the person check this out. She doesn't really have red hair, but this is what I'm going to share with you because you cannot go after Jezebel and not have retaliation, um, from, from Jezebel's daughter at It's another spirit. It's another spirit. This spirit of Adaliah actually uh, has the worst characteristics of Ahab and Jezebel put together. Can you imagine? I mean, she's the daughter. So, so now, you know, my, I'm going to share the, the dream with you in just a minute, but I got to set this up. Adaliah, Adaliah, Athaliah, however you want to say it, it's a wicked demon spirit. And it's more wicked than Jezebel. It's more wicked than Jezebel. I want you to share this with somebody right now. I want you to share it because... I feel like this is going to answer a lot of questions for a lot of people. I just feel like, like this is, this is an aha moment for so many people. I truly do. So share this with everyone you can share it with. Let's, let's, let's expose this. Why? Because an enemy exposed is an enemy defeated, right? You hear me say that all the time. We've even got a t-shirt on my website. An enemy exposed is an enemy defeated. So this spirit of Adaliah, actually murdered her own grandchildren. Yeah. So that she could take the throne of Judah. She was the only ever female monarch in Israel. She was the queen of Judah. 
She had her kids killed. I mean, her grandkids around. That's even worse. Who kills their grandbabies? Who kills their grandbabies? So, you know, I was writing a book many years ago and someone said, well, you know, Jennifer, uh, you can't say that Ad Adelia is worse than Jezebel. Yes, I can. She killed her grandkids. The spirit is like the worst parts of Ahab and Jezebel put together. And Ahab was pretty wicked too, by the way. The Bible said that Ahab, did more to provoke the Lord than any other king before him. And that was saying a lot because Jeroboam did some pretty wicked stuff. But it said Ahab did more to provoke the Lord than any other king before him. He married that woman Jezebel. Why would that provoke the Lord? Because Jezebel brought in the floodgates of idolatry into Israel worse than Jeroboam. And Jeroboam was pretty wicked. And so I want to share this with you. I want to share this, um, uh, this vision. I, it was first here. And I've also shared it here. This has stuff that you need to know in order uh, to fight. But this has a deeper, deeper revelation of just um, Adaliah uh, annihilating the spirit of Adaliah, uh, Athalia, Adaliah, whatever you want to call her. I don't care. She's a, she, it's, it's, a, it's a demon power and it's wicked. So let's get into this now. If you've shared this, uh, say amen. Keep talking to me. Keep letting me know your thoughts. And so in this dream, listen. If you're just coming in now, you're going to have to go back and start from the beginning afterwards because I'm not going to start over. But in this dream, listen, in this dream, I was in a house and this house was, it was unfamiliar to me. It, it wasn't a large house necessarily, but it was a house that was, it was crowded with people. It was overcrowded. I mean, there's so many people packed into this house. It was like, you'd almost just feel uncomfortable, almost like. You know, when you see in the movies or on TV, when, when somebody, their parents go out of town, there's a huge house party and there's just people everywhere. That's how it was. Almost like a college party house. The living room was, was over capacity, but nobody seemed to care. They're all having fun. Everybody was enjoying themselves. Listen, in the street, I, I could not discern what was the occasion because it seemed very festive. It seemed like everyone's having a blast. But I, I didn't know why they were there. I didn't understand why they were they were celebrating. I didn't get it. They were living high, man, high on the hog. It was as if, listen, it was as if the Holy Spirit picked me up and transported me in the spirit to a faraway place into an event that was already in progress. I just, I, I you know, here I am. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I didn't come in through the door. I was just in the dream. I was just in this house. And so I kept on watching. And in this very congested home, and, and there were Christians, by the way. I don't know how I knew there were Christians, but in dreams, many times you just you just know things. You just know that you know. It's a knowing, right? I wrote that whole book on decoding your dreams. And we talk all about interpreting dreams. So in this house, there was, it was full of Christians. People were running to and fro. I don't know what they were doing. But the entire house was buzzing with activity. It was almost as if they were like celebrating, but they were also getting ready for something that was bigger. And, and I couldn't see the faces of these hectic herds. I, 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 I didn't see them. I didn't see them. It was the strangest thing. It was almost as if the Lord was purposely hiding the faces of these people, which... I'm sure represent a great number of others. So I kept on watching and I, I didn't speak with anyone at that time. I wasn't, it was almost like I was just there observing. I was discerning and listen, listen to me. When you are an observer in a dream, it often uh, is for the purpose of intercession. So you, and I teach this in my book, decoding your dreams you are going to be the main topic of probably 90, 80 to 90% of your dreams. They're about you. But if you're an intercessor, many times you will be the observer in the dream because God's trying to show you something so you can pray about it. So, you know, I just kept observing. I'm trying to discern. I was in the room, but it was almost like nobody could see me. And I wasn't sure if I was just invisible. I mean, all this is going through my mind in the dream or they just didn't notice me. And either way, I, I was really glad that I was seemingly invisible because I, I didn't want to be part of that. I don't know why I was there. I was grieved, but I didn't know why. I just knew something was wrong. Something was off. I couldn't put my finger on. I didn't know what it was, but it was bad. 
Now, it seems like after some time, and it seems like I was there for a long time, it seemed to really drag out. It, seemed like a, it was a very long dream. And after some time, I was aware that people noticed my presence. Like they saw me, but they, they just kind of kept on doing what they were doing. They, they didn't stop. They didn't like come over and ask me anything. They just, they just kept on doing what they were doing. They, they finally noticed me. So I kept on watching. And, that, and again, nobody was really speaking to me except this one man. Listen. This one man, I, I'm reading this dream. It's in this book here. And I wrote sort of a sequel. I wrote this one. So these go together because I started it here. And God gave me more revelation here. I'm talking about the spirit of Adaliah. No one spoke to me except this one man. And listen to me. I couldn't see his face either. I couldn't see his face because the man engaged in conversation my journalism instincts took over. See, I'm, I was a journalist before I was saved. I worked for major newspapers, major magazines. And so in the, in the dream, I was kind of like instinctively who I was. I didn't stop being who I was. And I started asking him questions about what was going on. Now, my soul was investigating my spiritual agitation. Did you catch that? My soul was investigating my spiritual agitation. I was, I was, I knew there was something wrong, but I didn't know what it was. So I'm asking questions to try to discern better what it is I'm dealing with. And I wasn't sure if it was an angel or the Lord. I, I didn't get an immediate answer. So I kept on watching. And it was so surreal. It was so surreal, but it was altogether real. And after some time, I discerned the people were, they were confined in the house. Though they, they didn't really realize they were like imprisoned in this house. They had no clue. Like they were celebrating. They were getting ready for something. They're having a party. It's like everybody's happy. And really, in reality, they were in bondage. They were in prison. They didn't know it. They went into this house willingly and had not figured out how difficult it would be to escape. The people, they, just, they were just so busy doing all this stuff. But not one of them ever left the house. God, I'm re-seeing part of the dream right now. Wow. I'm re-seeing flashes from the dream right now. Wow. Whew, Jesus. Their movement was limited to inside the house. They couldn't leave the house. They had no idea that they were trapped. They did not know they couldn't leave. Now, as I kept on watching, you know, I observed you know, this house, and it reminded me of like a cult compound. I watched that, I watched that, uh, that movie about David Koresh. It was on Netflix, the, the series. It was like a docu-series. It wasn't real. It was a re reenactment, but it reminded me of that. So the people inside, they were there of their own free will, and they actually did not want to leave. Their needs were met. They had fellowship. It seemed like they were enjoying themselves. Listen. But they were deceived, fully deceived. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking to myself, what happened here? I knew they were deceived. They didn't know they were deceived. How did they get here? What pathway led them into this house? So I kept on watching. And after a while, it was mealtime. It was mealtime. And food was being distributed on a platter, like at a party, you know, how they come around with the trays and you know, you're sitting there and you take your little piece and you take your, you know, your drink and you take your, you know, whatever like that. And, uh, it, it, I was looking at what was on the platters and it wasn't kind of anything I ever recognized. It was something weird. It was strange. Strange is the word for it. And after having blended into the background for some time, they recognized me again and they offered me something to eat from this platter. And I'm like, you know, that awkward moment where you don't know what to do. So I kept on watching and, you know, with a better view, as I got closer, I saw it was like a strange looking piece of meat on the platter. It was like an, oh, it was oversized on a large bone and it was one single serving. It's like the, they have these weird ste steaks they have that was a huge bone. It was kind of like that, but it was like gnarly and it was just a single serving. Like this was for all one person. And I thought nobody could eat all this at one time. It's impossible. And someone uh, offered me the, the meat. They wanted to share their meat. And I, I politely declined because it was strange. I'm like, I ain't, uh, oh, no. No bueno. 
No, gracias. A mí no. No quiero. I don't want that. It was strange. And I, inst- listen, listen to me. I instinctively felt that if I ate the meat, I would be coming into agreement with whatever was going on there. So I kept watching. As I looked on, I was disturbed in my spirit as other people, they were eating this strange food. It was almost like it was a matter of survival because the food that was being offered was the only food available. There was no alternative. This is like, what's going to eat? And, but nobody thought it was strange. They actually welcomed it. They devoured it as if it was a filet mignon, but I, I couldn't eat it. I wasn't going to eat it. I'm not going to eat it. It looked funky. There's something wrong with this meat. It was strange. And again, if you're just coming in, I'm talking about a vision. I'm in a dream, rather. There, there's, there's lots of visions and dreams in this book, uh, Decoding the Mysteries of Heaven's War Room. Uh, but I wrote this as a sort of a sequel because, so if you got this, you need to get this because uh, this is Jezebel's Revenge. I, I shared the vision or the dream, rather, in here, but I go deeper on this in here. And um, I tell you, because I didn't get the whole world of revelation. So listen, I'm going to get back to this. You get these books on Amazon or wherever you get books. I kept on watching and suddenly the party seemed to end. Everyone in the house was on like high alarm. I mean, I, 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 I couldn't perceive any immediate danger, but people started scrambling around as if something bad were about to happen. And I separated myself. Notice that. Notice that. I separated myself. I walked down the hall and went into a bedroom. And in the bedroom, there was this oversized window, just just huge window. And so I kept on watching. And as I looked outside the window, listen, I saw two men in this dream in a car pulling into the driveway, two women rather. They were pulling into the driveway. And suddenly I knew this was what was causing the alarm in the house. And I bent down to stay you know, out of view and I was peeking through the window. Now in a dream, many times when, uh, when you're looking through a window, it's a prophetic perspective. We'll talk about that in a minute. So you know, I, 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 I was peeking through the window and I kept on watching and the two women were carrying something into the house and I could not see them and did not want them to see me. Like I knew, like, you know, I don't know, I'm not here. And I was trying to discern what was happening. And I felt an alarm in my spirit. And in the dream, my adrenaline was flowing. And finally, they saw me. And they wanted me to open the door to the house and let them in. And everyone else was hiding. Like, this is really weird. I was the only one who seemed positioned or even willing to let them in. And I decided that it was safe because they represented no danger to me. And I set out to let them in. And then I woke up. So all these other people were scared of these two women carrying this basket. I'm like, oh, it didn't bother me. I wasn't afraid. So now here's the interpretation. Listen, and again, this vision is shared in this book, Decoding the Mysteries of Heaven's War Room. And then this expounds on everything I'm talking to you about because the spirit of Adelia tried to kill me and uh, I'm hitting it back. All right, listen, when I woke up, I realized this dream was not about me, but the Lord was showing me something about the body of Christ and my role in the situation. So now after years of praying into this, I, I, I've resolved at least part of the interpretation. So again, I was an observer in the dream. Remember that? Which means I was standing as an intercessor. Now houses in dreams, listen, houses in dreams often represent ministry. It could be an actual home, but often they represent ministry. And this was a communal house rather than an individual's home. This was, listen, this, listen, this was a false camp within the prophetic movement that had been deceived by Jezebel. I'm going to say that again. These people in this house, they were having a good time, eating strange food. This was a communal house. This was a false camp within the prophetic movement that had been deceived by Jezebel. In other words, these were Jezebel's prophets. Jesus. I did not recognize the dream. I did not recognize the house because I'd never been in it. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't recognize the house 
because I'd never been in it. I ain't ever going to go in it either. Now, the Bible speaks of pro the prophets of Jezebel. And I'm trying to see if I have the book here. You know, I got a book about everything, don't I? I have a book called Discerning. I don't know where it's at, but it's called Discerning Prophetic Witchcraft. You might have heard about it. Came out last fall, Discerning Prophetic Witchcraft. Now, I had this dream years ago, and the dream is not in Discerning Prophetic Witchcraft, but but in the, in the book, I, uh, Discerning Prophetic Witchcraft, I, dis, I, 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 I share how the prophets of Jezebel are influenced by the spirit of Ashtoreth. Now, Ashtoreth was a pagan god that Queen Jezebel served. Now, Ashtoreth was known as a seducing goddess of war. So the prophets, listen, the prophets of Jezebel prophesy smooth, flattering words to try to manipulate and control you. Now, if that doesn't work, they transition into warfare mode and prophesy fearful sayings to try to intimidate and control you. So Ashtoreth and Baal were married. That sounds weird. These spirits, they were the God, the, the Greeks and Romans, and all these, they were married. So these spirits often share one another's characteristics. So we, we must discern here what we're dealing with. Now, Jesus left a letter for the church at Thyatira, and he wrote these words, and we got to understand if we want to really resist the influence of Jezebel. All right, we really have to understand if we want to resist the influence of Jezebel. Revelation 2, 18 through 29. These things, says the Son of God, who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass, I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the hearts and minds and I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now I say to you, to the rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden, but hold fast until I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works to the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like potter's vessels as I have received from my father and I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear to hear, let him say what the spirit is saying to, to the churches. So the spirit of Jezebel is real and raging. It has infiltrated some camps of the prophetic movement. And so we must stay pure. Purity is one of the key defenses against the Jezebel spirit. Where there are unhealed hurts and wounds, they can fester and bring bitterness that attracts Jezebel to be your protector. Now, prophetically speaking, listen, prophetically speaking, now is the time to get free from every tie that binds because warfare is only going to get worse in the days ahead. That's why I've got the School of Spiritual Warfare. You guys should check that out. The School of Spiritual Warfare at schoolofthespirit.tv. There's lots of courses over there for you to take. So after much prayer, listen. After much prayer, I believe the man who spoke to me in that house was an angel. He seemed to be an ally in the house. I inquired of the angel in the dream for explanations, just like the prophets in the Bible inquired of angels in their epic visions. And I cannot remember what he said. And I believe that that part of the revelation was withheld for another time because I know that I, I just know that he said something and I can't remember it. Many times in dreams when you don't remember something, it's because God doesn't want you to remember it just yet, but it's in your spirit. He will bring it back to you at the right time. So the house in the dream was unfamiliar to me because whatever this prophetic camp is, I've not been up close to it. I have seen a lot of false prophetic functions over the last decades, but whatever this is, I have not yet seen it closely enough to describe it. That's how wicked it is. Then again, I could not see the people's faces. They could be people we all recognize, or they could be people who have not yet made it onto the scene. I hope I never do see the fullness of this dream manifest, believe me. But we know that Jesus prophesied false prophets would rise in the last days and deceive many. 
There's no praying away this reality. Now, anytime I'm offered food in a dream, I won't eat it. In this particular dream, the meat represented revelation as a reward for compromising with Jezebel. Now, remember, the false prophets who ate at Jezebel's table in the book of 1 Kings, they were living it up, man, in a time of famine. There was no rain, and they were living it up. They were on Jezebel's payroll. They were Jezebel's yes-men. And the true prophets were either dead at Jezebel's hands, escaped to other countries, or they were hiding in a cave eating bread, or they were roaming around like Elijah. So keep in mind, meals in the Bible often represent provision, covenant, and even an intimacy in sharing. And the people in this home, listen to me, the people in this home had made a covenant with Jezebel, and she was providing for them a house and food. They had established a level of intimacy with Jezebel. So the meat, again, the meat is revelation. But what about the bone? Remember the, the meat was on this big giant bone? The meat is revelation, but what about the bone? A bone, listen, listen very carefully. A bone and a dream can often represent something that has no spiritual life. And again, I'm sharing from these two books, Decoding the Mysteries of Heaven's War Room, which is where I first shared this revelation after years of praying. Then I had to write a sequel. I had to write a sequel because there's too much more to say. And this book is not supposed to be about Adelia. This book's about the epic war in heaven that I saw, that vision. And this is a follow-up because there was just, I, I can't, I can't, at this time to get it out because this is going to be happening. It's already underway, but this spirit's going to start raging in the earth. Watch, watch, watch. I think Chuck Pierce even said something recently about this spirit right before the book came out. So listen, a bone in a dream can often represent something that has no spiritual life. So in my dream, there was some kind of alarm in the house and the people started to scatter. And I believe it was warning of coming judgment. God judged the strange fire and he will judge Jezebel. Jesus said he will throw her on a sick bed along with those who commit adultery with her. That means if you're fooling around with Jezebel, you need to cut it off. These prophets were eating from Jezebel's table and operating in strange fire. Judgment must come, but the time is not yet. Now, I went into the bedroom in the stream. The bedroom is a place of intimacy and a house full of chaos. No one else was there. Intimate, listen to me. Intimacy with Jesus will help us avoid the snares of Jezebel. In the dream, I look through the window, which in the dream represents often a prophetic perspective. That's what that's dream language. And I had seen what was in the living room of the house. And from my secret place, looking through the window, I was seeing what was to come. So I was seeing the current conditions of this prophetic camp that I was seeing what was about to happen. Now, what puzzled me was the two women pulling into the driveway. I mean, I prayed and prayed and pondered this for so, so long. And suddenly one day the Lord took me to Zechariah 5. And what unfolded next, listen, took my breath away. I believe the two women represented spirit beings like in Zechariah 5. They were intent on getting into the house and they carried something with them. Listen, the following accounts from Zechariah 5, 5 through 11. The angel who was talking with me came forward and said, look up and see what's coming. What is it? I asked. He replied, it's a basket for measuring grain, and it's filled with the sins of everyone throughout the land. Then the heavy lead cover was lifted off the basket, and there was a woman sitting inside. The angel said, this woman's name is wickedness. And he pushed her back into the basket and closed the heavy lid again. Then I looked up and saw two women flying toward us, gliding on the wind. They had wings like a stork, and they picked up the basket and flew it into the sky. Where are they taking the basket? I asked the angel. He replied to the land of Babylonia. And there they will build a temple for the basket. And when the temple is ready, they will set the basket there on its pedestal. My God. Some of you are going to have to back and watch this again. Better yet, watch it again and get the books. As Zechariah meditated on what he saw, the angel of interpretation came forth to help him understand the meaning. Essentially, the angel helped the prophet see how iniquity must be removed from the Holy Land. And consider that part of the prophet's ministry is to teach people to separate the profane from the holy. That is part of the prophetic function, is to teach people to separate the profane from the holy. 
So who is the woman in the basket? Who is the woman in the basket? The angel said her name is wickedness. Now, when I first had the dream, I thought it was Jezebel. And I pondered on this dream for the better part of now. It's been three years. I did not have the interpretation to release it to the body of Christ. The, this is the first time I've spoken about it or shared in it publicly, verbally, because I because I, I got it now, at least part of it. So when I first had the dream, I thought maybe it was Jezebel. But no, it's a spirit more wicked than even the notorious Jezebel. It's the spirit of Adaliah in the basket. Listen, I'm, listen, it is the spirit of Adaliah in the basket. Now, Meredith G. Klein, she confirms this in a publication called Kerux. It's a publication devoted to biblical theology. She also shares this confirmation in her book, Glory in Our Midst. She says this, listen, surely, listen to me. Listen, 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 listen. If you're listening, say amen. Surely this embodiment of wickedness is the apostate Adaliah in the historical model behind Zachariah's image of wickedness personified as the woman in the ephah. This is the woman in the basket. My jaw dropped. This is the woman in the basket. This is the woman in the, is Adaliah. Athaliah, Adaliah. I don't care how you say her name. This is the woman in the basket. You get, you got it, you got it, you got it. And, and I've, I'm teaching throughout this, this book here. Adalia's the diabolical family tree. Who is Adalia? When Adalia attacked me, Adalia invaded my dreams. A vengeful heir, a maddening megalomaniac, a ruthless murderess. These are the chapters. An inheritance thief, an illegal authoritarian, an abominable enemy a wicked counselor, preparing to annihilate Adelia. Look, I'm going to give you the, the solutions here. Preparing to annihilate Adelia, calling in the executors, divine downloads of destruction, brace for false accusations. Adelia always overplays her hand, the sword of David, dealing with Adelia's retaliation, and then a prayer to strike down Adelia. You got to get this book. The wicked Queen Jezebel died at the hand of her eunuchs after Jehu rode furiously toward her dwelling and commanded them to throw her down. But the spirit, of, uh, the spirit that was influencing Jezebel sought revenge. You cannot go after Jezebel without having retaliation from Adaliah. Now the name means afflicted of the Lord. It, it means whom God afflicts. She actually murdered her own grandchildren in order to attain the throne. Adalia was the woman in the basket and the angel pushed, listen, listen to me. The angel pushed her back into the basket and closed the heavy lid again. The angel did this because it was not yet time for the spirit of Adalia to rise. While the spirit has been working in the earth, it is one of Satan's end time secret weapons to wreak havoc on the church. That's why I shared the vision first in this book, Decoding the Mysteries of Heaven's War Room, because this is part of the end time battle. Then I wrote this one as a sequel because this book was not, the first book was not intended to be just about Adaliah. Now, few talk about Adaliah, and the few who do just seem to scratch the surface of the depravity of the spirit and how to defeat it. And so here is the book. I believe the dream revealed that the time of Adelia's uprising is here, and most believers are unprepared to resist it. For that matter, most believers are not ready to accept the reality of the Jezebel spirit, much less this woman named Wickedness. After the angel pushed Adelia back into the basket, Zachariah's vision concluded. He saw two women flying toward him, gliding in the wind. These were not angels because there's no female angels. Rather, they were a different form of spirit beings. John Ball Jackson taught that. These winged women came from heaven with wings filled with wind. In Zechariah's vision, they took the basket and flew it into the sky to Babylon to be set upon a pedestal. In my dream, they took the basket into the house. A temple is a house. Could I have been in the temple built for Adelia in my dream? Could it be possible that Adelia is about to usurp Jezebel in the earth, exacting revenge on the prophets and operating through some who are ambitious and some who are bloodthirsty? 
as the Israelite queen we see in the Bible? Could it be possible that the Jezebelic prophets will be even greater in the days ahead, more evil? I believe some already are. I want you to discern this. Listen, you know I don't push and press and like some people do on stuff, but these two books, you, you got to get them if you're at all interested. Decoding the, minis- the, the ministry, decoding the mysteries of heaven's war room. That's where I first shared the vision. And you need this because this is going to equip you uh, to take on your war assignment. Uh, this is going to help you to um, try to find the chapter headings here. This is going to help you. Uh, there's the mystery of the torn veil. The Mystery of Heaven's Secret Rooms, uh, I, The Vision of the War Room in Heaven, uh, The Mystery of the War in Heaven, The Mystery of Jehovah's War Room, and it goes on and on and on. God is commissioning a new generation of generals to rise up and deal with spirits like this. So I want to invite you to be part of the hashtag Annihilate Adelia movement. You've got to get in. I could tell you stories for sake of time right now. I'm not going to. I'll probably come on another time and tell you this spirit tried to kill me. Took me about a year to figure out what was coming against me and how to defeat it. And it was hell. It was a bad year. It was a hard year. And so, you know, you can take the experience that that took me a year to figure this out. You can read it in a couple of hours and have the strategy. Uh, it's just too much to go through here. But this this devil, it's 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 on the loose. It's gonna be a devil on the run. Amen. Get those copies of your books, guys. Remember, we're in South Florida. My church is Awakening House of Prayer. Love to see you there on Sunday. You can watch our online services at ahop.online and uh, become a web church member. Tap into all that. Get, a, get involved. It's going to bless you. I love you. I want to see you walk in victory, total victory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you.